This is a very, I think, a polarizing film. Yeah, this is, I feel like we're... I, we're wading into the danger zone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, do you think people care about this film? To, was it 13 yes. years? Yes, yes. Watchmen, Watchmen. It's Watchmen. Watchmen. So the reason this, I think, is a very polarizing film, or the reasons are, are several. But the fact of the matter is, and why people still care, is that the Watchmen comic book is perhaps the most celebrated comic book of all time. The comic book from which this film was based, obviously. And so I think that's where a lot of the passion that this film has inspired really derives from, is people who either love it, and they love what they did with the story from the comic book, or they hate it because they changed aspects of the comic mm -hmm. book. But do you want to say like where, what you think about it? Because this is your first time watching it. It is my first time watching it. I don't know. <laughs> that's that. That's where I'm left. I'm I'm not a big comic book person. I've gotten much much more into them uh, in recent years, and, uh, and I've enjoyed a lot of the Marvel run before Phase Four. I go, oh boy. God. Let's be serious here. And I really liked what Zack Snyder was doing with DC and, and some people are wildly against it. So to see this movie after that, all I kept thinking was, oh wow, this looks like the, the, the extended cut of, of uh, Justice, Justice League. League. Yeah, that's just, that's what it feels like. The slow motion, the popular songs, it's dark, it's brooding, it's a little graphic. A little graphic. Well, this, this film I, is yeah, very This graphic. film, I apologize. Okay. I'm, I'm talking about gotcha, copy, the, copy. Uh, the other film. Okay. Or like... <laughs> if this film's a little graphic, no, 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 no. I hate well, to I see... Well, I watch a lot of snuff films. <laughs> I'll show you graphic. <laughs> yeah. But see, no, I'm talking about Justice League. Yes, like yes. The, uh, the The Snyder cut of Justice League, I should say. It felt like this was his big swing. He believed in this. He loved this. He, he was a passionate about doing this and then looked at the DC universe and was like, here's my second chance. Because I, I, don't, I don't know, and this is a question for everyone, but you're here, uh, how successful was this film? How successful on a, uh, on a broad scale was this film? I think it was like reasonably successful. I'm not entirely sure. I think it made money, you know, like in, in that 100, 200 million range. Yeah. But it wasn't like, like he didn't blow the doors. It's not like Super Mario money. No, no, no. You know, like it's not. <laughs> it was. It was just so polarizing. Like what you know. That's. It comes back to that. And that's kind of my. That's kind of my point. I. I. I feel like he did this. He achieved what he wanted to achieve. Like from a film standpoint, it wasn't as well received. And then. And then said, "I'm just going to do this again over all of these films. You know, I'm going to have this whole universe. I'm going to make my Justice League like this. Like." but I'll pull it back. Mm -hmm. But I'll just, new, like that's probably where I went wrong because it's so polarizing. Yeah. Because so I'm gonna keep everything but the sex and the violence and, and then obviously it all goes awry or whatever. Yeah. But I feel like that was his intent. And I couldn't, get a, I couldn't get out from under that for most of it. In addition to that, it's so dense. Mm -hmm. It's so much. It's a lot to understand. It's a lot to process. And, and to his credit, I think this is a positive, He's not waiting for me. He's not waiting for the audience to figure this out. He's not spoon feeding me anything. And again, I say this as a compliment. It's a good, I think it's a good thing, but that doesn't, it's, I'm still so far behind. I'm still playing a lot of catch up. I'm still trying to remember all the details. I'm still trying to like, this is a movie that you have to watch multiple times. I think you have to suffer through it multiple times to really understand the impact because there's so much detail and so much effort into the story and into the meaning and the subtext and the, the symbolism and everything that he's, like the statements he's trying to make on one watch for someone who's unfamiliar with the source material, who doesn't love comics as a whole in general, it was, a lot, it was just a lot for me. And I don't mean that to say it's bad. I'm not, I don't think it's bad at all. I just like, I don't know. I need to watch it three more times. Yeah, yeah. Really try and sit with it, really try and understand it. That's my really, you, everyone's turned off by now, but. 
No, oh, that's an honest opinion. That's Keith. my we honest value opinion. honesty. Thank you. Yeah, I agree with certainly the part about it rewards multiple viewings, more so than almost any film. And that was a great segue <laughs> because uh, because I, I watch this movie a lot. Uh, I, from the first time I saw it, it really blew me away when it was new. When did you watch it? I want to say like as soon as, I don't think I saw it in the theater. I don't think. So I would say as soon as it was available, I was intrigued. Yeah. Uh, Cause I liked 300 and I, I thought this like, this is clear. I thought the trailer for Watchmen was really cool. I, I just like, I didn't, it just seemed so adult and, and interesting and, and something you've never seen before. But from the first time I watched it, I was totally overwhelmed and I was a little confused. Yeah. And it was similarly to how you're describing. And then, but, it, but there, there was so much there that I wanted to come back to initially, I think just visually, because the, the visuals are fucking phenomenal, I yeah. think, in this film. So then you're like, oh, I want to I check that out again. And then you're like, oh, okay, I'm kind of I'm getting it a little more. So then you watch it again. And then now I, I probably watch this movie and have for my life every year or so. It's a lot. And I just watched it again, finished it today, and I think it's incredible. Wow. Like, I really think it's an incredible achievement. Uh, I think it's almost certainly the best Zack Snyder film that I've watched. I think it's really, I think it's really impressive. Once I start to have a grasp of the story, then you can really pay attention to all of those little details that you're talking about. And so there's so many, so many little things that are so intentional with this film. And there's so much to like in that. There's so much to like about that, like Zack Snyder very purposefully shot most of this film on real sets in real locations, uh, very uh, intentionally opted to avoid green screens after using green screens almost exclusively in 300. Like just like let's make this more feel raw and real. Mm -hmm. I think the juggling of all of these characters like is actually pretty good. So like it really does a great job in my opinion of handling each of these people's backgrounds just enough. And you almost kind of go into these little mini movies in the middle of this film right. where it's like, okay, we're gonna get Dr. Manhattan's origin story here, which is like this super powerful little uh, sequence for me. You get, uh, you get Rorschach's terrible upbringing and, and where he, and you, and you kind of just feel these pieces and you really get a good sense of these characters, which I think is incredibly impressive in this fantastical world in, with such dense subject matter oh, and, yeah. and stories. Like to, to be able to, to handle all of that, and I think pretty well, like there, there it's not perfect. There are some like a little muddiness here and there, but I really think it's, it, it's, it's really great. I think it's really great. Yeah. And I didn't even talk about the visuals. <laughs> I mean, the cinematography is yeah, the the is like mind blowingly good. I think the the I think he's a really good director. I like I I really enjoy his work. I, I like, well, he cares. You can yeah, tell he cares. You can tell he really gives a shit, and that just makes me appreciate it. Yes, so much, so so much. That's why I would never say anything. I mean, I'll say some negative stuff, but like. I, I don't, as a whole, like I, I don't, wouldn't want to say anything negative about Zack Snyder and the work that he does. Well, we, we've said a lot of negative things about Man of Steel and the Justice. I didn't. Yes, you did. <laughs> I don't mind Man of Steel. I like Man no, of no. Steel. I don't mind Man of Steel, but just because we like this this guy's style or whatever it is, yeah. doesn't mean that he's only making great movies. No, I know that. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he put that Justice League in four three. Please, <laughs> I wake up having nightmares about that. It's so stupid. <laughs> but it is. Very, it's so similar. It's so. It's so similar. Yeah, I think he has a really good sense of visual styling. Yes. And that's apparent. Like, yeah. that is just apparent. You can, you can hate Zack Snyder, and you have to give him that. You like, have he, to. He like, has a beautiful like, eye for Yeah, I think it's, shots. like, inarguable. Yes. Like, yes. it's just, he's great at that. He's great at that. So I'll always give him a chance. Yeah. And I like directors who have a style. I like writers who have a style. Like, I, I appreciate a, about that. It's another way... For me to get a sense of the film before I see the film, like I don't need to see a lot of trailers for Wes Anderson films. Yeah. Like I have a pretty good idea what I'm gonna get. I don't yeah. need to see a lot of trailer for uh, Martin Scorsese films. I know what I'm gonna get. Sorkin films. I know what I'm gonna get. Yeah. You know, Zack Snyder the same way. I kind of feel like I know what I'm gonna get, and I'm willing to go along with it. Yeah. We can we can touch again on just the the, the polarization of this film, maybe just from the film standpoint, and not necessarily folks who dug the comic so much and, and didn't yeah, like what yeah, this yeah. did. What, the graphic nature of the film? 
Yes, because I think that has to have played into not knowing what to do with this movie. Like, I'm, I'm really shocked it was made. It's, and I'm shocked it was made back then. You know, the, the point of it, and, and Zach fought for this for, for the beginning, was not only to stay, uh, you know, stay true to the novel, and in doing that, and, and staying true to that, you know, it's gonna be rated R, it's gonna be, it's gonna be vicious. I am shocked every time I watch it by how graphic it is. I always forget. Yeah. Like, I remember certain things, obviously, but it's like, like I'm, and, and it's hard to describe 14 years ago in 2009 when what what are the superhero movies that are coming out around that time? Iron like, Man. Some of those like X Men. Iron Man might was a way. Yeah, but it's like that's that ha the the MCU style hasn't been born. Detective. Most of it is like Fox Fantastic Four movies yeah, yeah, yeah. and the X Men movies, which were hit and miss, and, and it, there's just nothing like this. So to so to come so to say I'm gonna take this this heralded IP and I'm gonna turn it into a three, four hour long epic that is a hard R, that has graphic violence, and these superheroes uh, are abusive and rapists, mm -hmm. and, uh, and some of them are truly awful people, and at least two of them don't think that humanity deserves to live, and it's like, <laughs> and it's gonna be great. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. people are gonna love it. Like, well, no wonder this movie didn't, like, set the world on fire, because people would be like, I mean, it's a hard watch. Like, it I, is think, a hard I watch. think general audiences probably can't, yeah. can't hang. Yeah. Yeah. But, but great. Yeah, like, no, absolutely. No, and I, I know you're not saying against yeah, yeah. that, but, but I, I like that it's in the, the superhero genre. I li like, we should continue to, to push creative interpretations of genres. I want people to come to the movie thinking it's a superhero movie and getting their their brains blown out by it a little bit. Like, let's not just go back to the well. Somebody says like, this is for kids, and of this course. is like, there are cartoons for adults. Yeah. Yes. Fuck you, God. Not today, bitch. That should exist. Mm. It's not just like this is not just for this person, and this is not just for this person. We're gonna only do this. Like, I think it's awesome. You like anime porn? That's all I. That's all I heard. Oh, God, <laughs> I feel. <laughs> I feel lighter now that it's off my chest. Everyone we get it, kid. <laughs> <laughs> and there should be those kind of cartoons, and they should be available to stream for free. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to derail you. <laughs> it's funny. But you get, I, I believe her points. That, that's my point. I just, I think it's, like, why the fuck not? Like, it's yeah. awesome. I'm glad that, I'm glad it exists. Oh, I'm totally. glad we, we, we have that as a reference point, a data point in the, you know, pantheon of films. I think the fact that this film exists and came out several years before, you know, a couple years before the huge superhero boon, as like the Avengers took over in 2012 and this decade of the superhero film, uh, like the fact that this film exists and is so, like even if you don't love this film, I, I, it's hard for me to imagine an argument against this being vastly superior as a film, as craft, to most of the superhero films that have followed. So it's like, this kind of film can be made. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like you can, you can hold these characters with this degree of reverence and, and this degree of attention to detail and not just like punchline-y, fucking Thor yeah. love and thunder, yeah. like, like bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like, you can, you, can, you can tell a story with superheroes. And a lot of this, this is a struggle. A lot of it is credit to the original source material. Like that can't of be course. said yeah, enough. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's You're like, right. oh wow, Zack Snyder telling this brave story of superheroes dealing with all these themes. It's like, he, he lifted, this is one of some people's complaints, is he lifted so much directly from, until really the climax of the film, yeah. is the same as the comic yeah. book. But to his credit, no one else would do it. Yes, you no, know, totally, to, to totally. His, like that's where he deserves yes, the credit. Yes, totally. So it's the twofold. Yes, absolutely. But that, that you can have superheroes dealing with this sort of, like it's, it's, it's so beautiful in its like fucked upness. And I think that's kind of the point, you know? Like, the, the, like each, each Watchmen character is, is viewing the world through like a different philosophy and is trying to navigate the world through that, which is the most like relatably human thing. And that is something that is like, Eternals, uh, I think kind of wanted to try to do something like that, like, not successfully, okay. not successfully. But there was an element of a Eternals where at, the, at a pivot point in that film where I was like, oh man, maybe this film can do this, where I thought maybe 
like, you know, the ends justify the means, right? Like the Oz, Ozymandias in Watchmen, like the, the smartest man in the world, Adrian and Veidt, where he's, you know, the calls come from inside the house. He's a villain. He's a member of their team. But like, he's trying to save the world in a way that is, requires some sacrifice. Yeah. And even Dr. Manhattan comes to agree with him. He's right. Exposing Adrian would only doom the world to nuclear destruction again. And like, I love that shit. Yeah. And then Rorschach is so tied to his no compromises. That's who I am. No compromises. That he fucking dies. Like they kill him Spoiler. very unceremoniously. Yeah. You know? And then we just move on. And, and that's, the, that's the climax of your superhero film. Is the team fights each other really low key. Yeah. And then argues about the point of life. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. one of them gets killed. And then they just kind of like... And it's over. That's it. Like, <laughs> that's incredible. No sky beam. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No yeah, monster no, fight. No light. Yeah. Sh sh show. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's very subversive in, in that way where where it's it's your anti superhero movie yeah. almost. It's it's not a little kid superhero movie. This is uh, an adult movie, and and I, I have a hard time putting a superhero even in front of it because it's it's so much more than just that. There was there was no. I thought this uh, hour four into it. I go. There's no real villain. There's no, they're like unlikable characters yeah. and a looming global threat. What are the chances the Russians will actually attack the United States? We don't spend any time in Russia. We're not looking, we're, we're not like making Russia the villain yeah. in, in this movie particularly. It's just like there's a, there's a threat with, from Russia. Like, oh, there's tension, there's global tension. Yeah. The end. That's not what the film is about. Yeah. It's obviously relevant, but that's... So it's like, well, who's the bad guy? Who's the, there, is, there isn't one. Yeah, they're just all good guys trying things differently. Yes, yeah, which is not how these films are typically structured. And I, I love that, I, I love that. That yeah. part I loved Yeah. very much. It's incredible. Yeah. What do you like? <laughs> uh, I, aside from like, let's just say, we'll kind of put the directing aside and the, the visuals and the the juggling of all the the characters, which I, I I love. I think the action is a lot of fun. I think where I've criticized, I'm gonna come right back to the director. <laughs> where I've criticized <laughs> Snyder's stuff more recently, maybe with the Justice League, which which I didn't hate. Like I thought that movie was totally I fine. Liked it, yeah. it, was, it was fine. It was much better than the oh, yeah. Joss Whedon version. Holy shit, that movie was awful. Yes. Uh, but like where he gets a little too masturbatory with some of those slow motion shots. Yeah, but and that's just the like, same. okay, it is, but like. It feels really purposeful here in Watchmen, like and and really beautiful a lot of the time. Where it's just like people jumping out of ships or you know like jumping into a scene and like very adoring of a lot of his subject matter. Like so much like cool shit. Like there's a lot of cool, cool shots in yeah. this. Um, yeah, yeah. I always really loved Doctor Manhattan. So this is like a <laughs> is it from a comics. Or from, from this, this film, because I, I didn't, I've never read the comics. It's something I, I'd like to buy and, and have now, because I, I want to understand more about it. But Dr. Manhattan as a character in this film, I always really related to, mm -hmm. and I that really... That checks out. <laughs> you deserve the comfort of an old friend. If eagle-eyed viewers will, have, will see I have a Dr. Manhattan action figure in the back of many of the episodes that I recorded in, in my office. And I, it's, it was not entirely like my crush on... Patrick Bateman in mm. American Psycho. I simply am not there. Another where it's like great hero. I almost at that age, right? Like as a teenager, like you want to feel superior, and you're like, I'm so far beyond this world. And I was really fascinated by someone who has the power to save the world, but thinks it might not be worth it. Like, eh, is life really so great? Like he really has like some great lines when he when he takes yeah. uh, uh, Miss Jupiter uh, over to Mars and is like, eh. Mars is doing just fine without life. Why would you think that life would make this increment? Would it be better with a shopping mall? Would it be better with, you know, like that stuff is really interesting to me. And so I've really liked him because I like this really powerful being that is really soft spoken and really yeah. thoughtful. And like, I, I, I've, I've just been obsessed with him. And as I've gotten older, I actually really like Ozymandias too, the smartest man in the world. Like, and I understand his goal, you know, like to, you kill kill a few millions to save billions. Like that, you know, I get well, it. Well, he unified, not only did he do that, but he unified everyone by giving them a common enemy. Well, that's that's how he did that. You're right. Yeah. It's because he, he, we're so close to nuclear war, which is sure to annihilate all of us. So let's, 
Let's trick. Let's these give folks. them a, a real person yeah. to fear. Unite. Let's give them some some bigger to. Yeah, and that makes sense. Fear. Like, yeah, are you happy that New York and L.A. and Hong Kong and Moscow got nuked? No, I mean that's sad. But like, it was all going to get nuked if they didn't get nuked. You know right, what I mean? Right. Like that's it would have. Yeah. That's that's really fascinating stuff. Yeah. So the, I, I like all that. But stuff. that's that's the. I mean, that is the best part of the film, in, in in my opinion, and what I think Marvel has lost, and what I think Marvel sort of tapped into originally, not to this level by any means, but it was there. It was sort of underneath everything a little bit. But the conflict being something that humans can relate to. Yeah. All this fantastical shit is great and it's fun, but at the core of it, I have to relate to it. That's the only way I can invest to it. Yeah. But when it just becomes about spectacle yeah. and spells and potions and light beams and dragons flying at a, like, okay, sure. Like it's not, yeah. but if you give me some, the conflict, the moral conflict here, oh, I can relate. I know that. I know yeah. why this is manifesting in this way. Yeah. That makes sense. So I, the, this film is super deep in those like moral conundrums yeah. and presents really interesting on and both you sides. You can find characters that characters you can relate you, to personally. Yes. Like, oh, that's how I would react. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. They're rooted in, in, in that. Yeah. And that's what makes this movie really good. So there's yeah. a, a positive for you. 100%. I'll single out a couple of performances that I really like. Uh -huh. uh, I don't think everybody does great. <laughs> really? I don't think everybody does great. I think, I think it's a really interesting cast. And I wonder, because the way it's aged, because none of these people have gone on to become huge stars. Mm -hmm. The cast is mostly names that you don't know. I mean, do people really know, you know, Jackie Earl Haley, Malin Ackerman. Jeffrey Dean Morgan, yeah. Billy Crudup. But there's not, there's not a name above the title on this. It's really about the material itself. But they were all, they're all present enough in films. Like they're all familiar. Yeah. And I, so I can't, I can't decide if I think that was really excellent casting or if they were trying to, bank on these up and comers and these are going to be the next generation of stars and they all fail and they didn't and they didn't and how much of that was due to this film like yeah i'm really fascinated by you know because all of these people are talented enough like even the worst of them talented enough to 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 be very successful and and they're all successful in ways but none of them have become like household names so to speak but the ones who I think do a really great job, I think Matthew Good, who's Ozymandias, the, the villain, mm -hmm. I think I really like him, and I think he does great. And he recently popped up in... Um, I love him. Oh, I, like, I, like, I think he does really great. Um, he was... I forget, what the the, the... the the Godfather show, where M Miles Teller is the producer of The Godfather. The, uh, uh, you haven't seen that? No, oh, it's great. It's a good time. Uh, he, he's, he's a great time. He's like this coked out film producer in the 70s. He's really awesome in that. So you can keep your fucking sticker gum. You sold it to cry and you sit there. I don't need it. I forgot more about making movies than you'll ever know. Uh, happy to see him succeed. I think, was it, is it Jackie Earl Haley? Rorschach? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he, I just know from Semi Pro. Dukes, where are you from? Flint, Michigan. And I never missed a game. Woo! That's, that's it. Yeah, yeah. He had a little run after this. Uh, and he does very good. He does very good. Um, yeah, he, little, he does well. A little Batman-y voice. <laughs> Christian Bale. Yeah, that, that's almost, it was like too much, especially because it's the first thing you hear. Yeah, that it's was always one voice. of the things that kind of turned me off and from I the go, first viewing. And I this is cliche. He's already, this just yeah, feels blood like. blood running in the streets. Yeah. Like, I, I thought that was a little much the first few times I saw it. The streets are extended gutters, and the gutters are full of blood. Yeah, I don't know. I'm excited for negatives, because I have some negatives, yeah, and yeah. That's, that's one of them. His yeah. voice. And the writing of those things, I mean, maybe that's supposed to be him. It is. It's, like, it's, it's his, his journal. His, I, mean, I know, it, yes. But that's his character is what I mean. Like, yeah. very flower, not flowery, but like poetically spoken, yeah. but aggressively. Like, I read a lot of Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> yeah, like, the, the, the blood will run deep. And the, so it's yeah, like, yeah. you're writing a poem, but it's like gross. Yeah, yeah. It just, it didn't, like, I don't know, it didn't land with, with me. I didn't love that part. Yeah. It was distracting. It pulled me out a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I get that. It did for me too the first few times. And that that would have been my probably biggest criticism after even the third or fourth time I saw this film. I was like, ah, it's still a little much. It's a little much. Still a little much. I like that I saw him use the voice without the mask. Yeah. Like I like that. Yeah. But that's like, oh, that's I guess that is his voice. Yeah. He's not just putting on to be like, I'm a crepe crepe crusader. You can't know who I am. Yeah. That kind of thing. Um. Two other things really quickly, but then we get to your negatives. Yes. Um, always got to give a shout out to uh, the great Carla Gugino, um, the original Miss Jupiter, mm. the, the mom. 
Go to the Gugino. <laughs> That's this talented, talented woman. <laughs> Big fan of hers. Okay. Always, always have been, always will be. Carla, we love you here on the Bluff Council. Uh, <laughs> If you just, uh, Come on the show. Open invite. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful, talented actress. Uh, lived in Paradise, California. Wow. For a day. Like a year or so when she was five years old in a teepee. Wow. That's, that that's seems, all I know. Sure, sure. Paradise, California. Paradise, yeah, he's a, he's yeah. a fan. Yeah. He's a fan. <laughs> so always happy when she pops up in, in projects. Uh, and then I love all of the graphicness of this film. I love that there's a sex scene, like a pretty graphic sex scene. There's a couple scene. sex scenes. Yeah, so but like not, one graphic one. There's one, yes. And, but all of them, I mean, I don't know. And I like, I, I just, like this sounds like a joke, I guess it is. The balls it takes to just show a big blue penis all the time. To just have him be naked all the time. I mean, that, I just don't get it. It's incredible. I don't, is it? I because it, just, cause it makes sense. It's 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 like I, it's like it's yes. like there's probably twelve people in that room with Zack Snyder and whoever else made that decision, and they're like talking him out of it, like hey, just put him in the speedos, yeah, like it's fine. He's but, got a speedo on sometimes. Yeah, yeah, like when he's in public or whatever. Yeah, but it's like no. I mean, the studio asked me like, is there any way we could like, could he just be like a Ken doll? Could he just have like a a bump? I'm like, he's supposed to be like having sex with his girlfriend, so like I don't know how he changes his body, but that's just really upsetting to think that he has to grow something that doesn't happen. <laughs> anyway. Like, if this, if this person was real, it's a super being who can be 10 places at once, he's, he's solving nuclear yeah. power and he's his going down on his, on his women and his woman on the other room. I uh, think he gives a shit. You think he has like, bashfulness or yeah. like he's ashamed of his body like, well clearly not he's well, fucking gorgeous average penis <laughs> i just love that i love that that was a decision that was made because to me even if you think it's silly or egregious or whatever like it's evidence of like someone really paying attention to what makes sense yes like this it would make sense yes it's not I, I just don't like it <laughs> there's, there's no there's no other way around it it just why i don't I don't need it. I just don't want it. Mm. I don't need it. Mm. Yeah, it says a lot about me. Mm. It's his big blue penis makes me uncomfortable, mm. self-conscious. Average uh, blue penis. <laughs> I just, like, I get it. Like, I get it. But it was so, it was just, it was so much. It was mm. every, yeah, but I, but it, you're right. So I'm not mad at the film for doing it. I just, like... It just shows like that they yeah. were just like committed. Yeah, committed. This is a lot of commitment. Yeah, yeah. And that's I, I all agree. I want. That's all I want. Agree. I agree. Commit to more full frontal male. More full frontal male nudity. I got a surprise for you. <sighs> what didn't you like? What are the, what are the things that really resonated for you? The the I have just more questions. I'm left with a lot of questions, and maybe just because I don't fully, I haven't you know fully sat with it and thought about it and understood it, so they may become more clear, but. It doesn't, I don't understand, for the most of, for most of the film, they don't feel like superheroes. And are they, are they superheroes? Dr. Manhattan feels like the only superhero. Yeah, he's the, the only super them, powered. Being. That's, yeah, so like superhero is just, oh, I literally just know how to fight and I put on an outfit? It, it, to an extent, like let's look at like uh, Night Owl. Patrick Wilson, the guy with the goggles. Yeah. He's like Batman. The others, it's a little muddy for me too, as someone who doesn't know all the, yeah. the background of it. Ozymandias is the most interesting to me because he's clearly like super strong. Yeah, he's like the best. Yeah, like he's the smartest. He's literally the smartest. Yeah. And he jokes he can catch bullets and can. And did. So he has to have some extra. Power. Like he has to have something extra. And that was hard. Again, I, I know I, I've said this a hundred times. And hard explain it to us. Explain it to us. Yeah, please explain. Like, how does this work? I just need to know what people are able to do. I didn't understand Ross, Ross Shack's face. Like, how was that happening? Because it's, it's cool. It is cool. And it's per it fits perfect with it's his a, character. It's an incredible visual. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm not, I'm not saying I don't like it or don't want it in the film. I just want to know why I'm left wondering why most of the film, because I don't, I mean, again, maybe I missed it. There's a lot to figure out or no, not that's never like explained. But why does it continue to move? Yeah. I get his, the play on his name. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's very uh, like full circle, like when he's dead. Yeah, yeah, His yeah. blood is a, is yeah. a Rorschach test. Like yeah. I get it, I like it, 
But why? Yeah. What is that? Like, what is physically happening? Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I guess. Just I guess shit like that. It's hard for me to understand. I guess they're they're asking you to have like a certain leap of just like the film is grounded in so many ways, <laughs> almost too grounded, <laughs> almost too uh, real. Uh, so that, but it's it's still a movie that's like in the comic book world, in the comic book galaxy. So there's going to be a couple of fantastical elements that aren't necessarily vividly explained. You know, I don't know. That's just trying to sure. throw something out there. Uh, it could have been. I don't know. I don't understand. Give me like, something. <laughs> yeah, like Silk Spectre, like the, the the sexy gal. Like she's just wearing lingerie. Yeah, what is, is a her, good fighter? Yeah, that's that's what it felt like. It just felt like oh, so these people aren't superheroes as I understand them. They're just people who decide to take matters into their own hands. Yeah, like what makes them? Yeah, what makes the what separates them from anyone else who would do this? Yeah, or who decided to do this? I mean, even more so, like, <laughs> like Carla Gugino when was showing her back in the '40s or whatever that was. Like, uh, like she's just, like that outfit is just it's nothing. Like she's just, she's just wearing like a bathing suit. Yeah. And and she's her tits are falling out of it. And like you can't and she's not like jacked. Like you can't imagine that woman is just like this incredible fighter that yeah. can beat up ten guys yeah. who are robbing the the fucking docks. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> it's it's the 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 Batman character. What like it's clearly a mantle, right? Because his who, I don't know yeah, if you get the old, relation, old the older guy was like, it's the your... The first night owl, yeah. yeah his the night owl, now you're the night owl. So like, but what prevents, again, I'm getting lost in the details, but it's such a detail-driven story, I can't help but look at details, but what prevents another guy from dressing up like a night yeah. owl? And like, why, why? I guess the same thing goes for Batman, but it just, yeah. I don't know, Batman seems more fleshed out. Batman, they try it in some of those movies, and those guys always get fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Heath Ledger fucks up a bunch of fake Batman uh, in The uh, Dark Knight. So yeah. again, it sounds nitpicky, but I, that now, type of stuff. They're valid know. questions. Yeah. They're valid questions. I, I was thinking that, too. I'd like to understand their the limits Please, of these people's tell us. powers. Here's, here's another question for, for those at home. Uh, and you, I guess. Um, <laughs> we'll go to bed. So his, the... It seemed like a really big turning point in the film was uh, Jupiter finding out her father was the comedian, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Outside of he's just a shitty guy, why is that a big deal? Why does that warrant the reaction? Well, because he's an exceptionally shitty guy. He's like, but is that it? Or I just thought I missed. It just felt like it didn't warrant the... Yeah, like if, if you told me right now my dad is not who my dad was. Yeah. And he's like Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah. You tell me my dad is Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah. I'm not going to fall to the ground and scream to the heavens why. I'd be like, fuck. Oh, well, that's just, that's, that's just subjective. Awful. Right? I, but it made me think there was something that I missed. Like he's just a shitty guy. Like he's a really bad guy. No, he's a horrible guy, guy who like she knows as her mom's rapist. Like, that's how she can contextualize him. It's like, this is the guy who tried to rape my mom and beat the shit out of her and is this horribly abusive, shooting pregnant women in Vietnam. Horrible, horrible. Yeah, he's not, like, he's kind awful. of a bad guy. Yeah, yeah, he's awful. I'm not, like... So, like, I understand. Maybe I'm like, a sociopath. I just, well, it's, it's like just... you're, you're 25, 30 years old and you find out that this guy who's this, just been this villain in, in, your, in your head forever. And because you're also learning... Cause, you're like the product of this negative thing that you feel like, like it wasn't the rape that uh, I'm pregnant, conceived. Yeah, yeah. yeah. cause that but was consensual. But, but then it's like, but then you're having this, this, uh, this uh, come to Jesus with like uh, coming to grips with your mom, went back and had a consensual relationship with him after he did that horrible thing to her. The guy tries to rape you and years later you let him finish the job. What, were you drunk or just lonely? There's just a lot to unpack there. So that's different for each person. There's not. There's almost nothing in the world that can make me drop to my knees and scream personally. Yeah, but yeah. that's not for everybody. <laughs> I know plenty of people who drop their knees and scream because they're at ice cream at the same. Well, point. I apologize for that. I shouldn't have <laughs> you made would that scene. That. Yes, that's. <laughs> <laughs> you dropped your knees and screamed last <laughs> night while we were at the grocery store. <laughs> there was no ice cream, and I wanted some. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just, I just, it made me feel like I was missing something, and and I was like, why, why is this such a big? It's like you're laying this on thick. And it's like, yeah, he's awful. But uh, but you're right. I guess it's subjective. I just didn't understand it. Yeah. I love that that as I've gotten older too, I've loved more what Manhattan says to her in that moment. Like what like it it might be kind of heavy handed or kind of cheesy for some people. But I forget that, what he says. Like, what does he say? Well, 
learning that the comedian is her father is what inspires him to believe that humanity is worth saving because the, the complexity of human emotion and interaction, the fact that this woman who was violently assaulted and, and attempted raped by this guy could, would go back to him at some point. Your mother loves a man, Edward Blake, the comedian, the man she has every reason to hate. And from this like chaotic, mostly horrible dynamic that they had, this beautiful, perfect to him person was brought into the world. And out of that contradiction against unfathomable odds, it's you. Like that is the miracle. He says miracles don't exist by their definition. But then he learns this and he goes, you are a miracle. Like that is, like that's really beautiful. Like I got kind of emotional about that. Like that's like really, you can see why this comic and this story is yeah. held in such high regard. Like it really tackles yeah. incredible, like to, sorry. I mean, I don't want to dwell on assault. Uh, but like to make that such a central theme of your superhero epic about like the 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 imperfections of humanity that 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 your most important character Dr. Manhattan your most powerful character is moved to save humanity because of the product of like a bad abusive relationship but that is kind of gorgeous in a really fucked up way. Like no, that's absolutely. really crazy. Yeah, it's no, really I, awesome storytelling. Th absolutely. It's throughout. The whole movie poses these questions. It really holds things out for the audience to sort of make a decision, see who they grab onto, see who they don't or what they don't. Like it's, it does a great job of doing that. Yeah. And it's beautiful. It's, it, it is. It is. Uh, agreed. A hundred percent. Carla Gugino's character being like, like as I get older and the, the what ahead of me gets dimmer, the stuff in my past gets brighter, even the really awful stuff. Every day, the future looks a little bit darker. But the past, even the grimy parts of it, keep on getting brighter. Like that's it's, a remarkable it, it's thing to say. Yeah, yeah. But it's like that's accurate. like, and it's particularly in this day and age where everybody is very sensitive about like, oh wait, she, she's saying even the bad stuff is brighter behind. Like you can never, you know, yada, yada, yada. But like, it's incredible. It's just incredible perspective. Like yeah. it's just an incredible thing to yeah. put in where you're like, I'd rather be young and miserable than like getting older. And, and, and not knowing That's what's, what you what's take coming. from that? Yeah, yeah, I'd rather, even the bad shit, even when I was being abused or beat up or this, this torrid love affair with this attempted rapist, that stuff, because I was young and beautiful and vivacious. Oh, I don't, I don't interpret it that way. You don't interpret it that way? No, which is interesting. Yeah. This is, and this is what filmmaking is about. Yeah. I, I, the way that that resonates with, with me is that you say, when I look back, even the bad stuff was good because it made me who I am now. It's I, I survived this. Oh yeah. I, I look at way. it in a positive way. Like the shit that I went through, like at the time is awful and so dark and so terrible. No. I survive it, I get to this point and I can look back fondly on those because it made me, it built me. And she says to her daughter at the end, I can't be mad because it gave me you. Yes. Like this is beautiful. Like it's all beautiful. It's yes. all what makes me me. Yes. That's how I interpret and, it. And you could well be right. I think that Thank you. to me that character is not the most introspective sort. She's not she's not portrayed. She's like an old lush who wants, yeah. like wants to talk about the good old days. And to me it's more not necessarily only, only superficial things. I don't mean to be like, when I look back when I was, I'd rather be young and beautiful and being fucking assaulted than what I am now. But it's young and beautiful and full of hope and having a future ahead of you. Mm. Like it's that, it's the youth. I'd rather just have youth and, and, and hope and, and, and I think it's, I wanna know what people will think. Yeah. I wanna know who's, who's right. Yeah, because I, I think you're wrong. <laughs> but I, I see your point. I definitely could see how one could she, interpret yeah, yeah, around that same time. She like adoringly kind of like brushes her thumb down the picture of the comedian that she has. So to me, it's like she's literally just like even the shitty times were were better when I was younger. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's about her being young. I think it's her. Maybe I'll meet you halfway here and say 
Like, I miss those, even the shitty days, I miss them. But I only think you get the perspective after getting th through them. Mm -hmm. You know, and not like, I miss, I don't know. It's interesting. I, yeah, it's Tell us what you think. Tell us what you think. Tell me why I'm lot. right. <laughs> and tell me why I'm right. Thank you. You're not gonna do that. Please? <laughs> <laughs> I think it gets really confusing. And again, back to like, powers and what, how things exist in this world and that sort of stuff. Things were getting a little muddy for me with Dr. Manhattan's ability to see the future and mm -hmm. the past, and, but he only sees what's happens to him. Mm -hmm. But how could he, like if you know the future, it's hard, like how do you not act on that? And how do you, he says like, I, I know you cheated. You're about to tell me you cheated. And then she tells him and he goes, what? But you, but you knew, like why, how, why is that a thing? If you know how this ends, why wouldn't you stop it before it starts? If you have a character who can change the world like this, who knows the future, knows everything, like I have, I have ultimate strength and ultimate power, I can transport, like can't you just fix this then? I understand the conundrum, the moral conundrum of, of you know, do I even want to? Which yeah. is a great angle for that character. Yeah. And I like how it's handled, I do. That in general, that stuff, I, I get lost a little bit. Sure, I think generally speaking, there is a moral conundrum stuff. But mostly it is like what he said. He can only see what's a part of his journey. Or, or, and but I think, all of this revolves around him. No, I know, I know. But part of, it's, it's talked about towards the end of the film, part of what Ozymandias did was use some sort of technology or some sort of energy wave or whatever it was to cloud his vision Judgment. about his plan. And he just kind of said that. I kind of remember that too vaguely. Yeah, but where he it's just like, like, oh, I, I did that. <laughs> yeah. I just did that thing that does that. I think it's brought up like two or three times, so it's not just like, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But like, it's referenced once or twice. Even if I wanted to help, my future is blocked by some kind of temporal interference. And then when, when he's like doing his monologue, like his, his villain monologue, he says like, that part of my plan too was to use the tachyon something or other yeah. to block John from being able to see what I'm doing. I should thank you. I'd almost forgotten the excitement of not knowing. Which is why he was surprised when he landed back in New York post nuke and was like, oh my God, it's me who did this. It's made to look like me. And so he didn't know entirely. Yeah. I feel like, why not just get rid of that then? Like, wouldn't that be easier to like not make that, well, I mean, for me, from a film standpoint, people would be like, that's not the source material. But like, just make him not see the future. Well, I think that's a big part of who he is. He sees the future? Well, he, he sees time in a way that can't even be explained. Like, you know, he says that, like, I wish you yeah, could see that, time like the way I see it. Yeah. Like, so I think that's a huge part of I guess. what he believes and what he sees, because, because he sees the world like that, and he sees all infinite possibilities for himself or vice versa in the past and present and future. Like, that's what makes him partially, at least, like, not have hope. Or it's just like, ah, it's all fucked. Like, kind of, I think. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's... Again, it just things that, that make it hard for me to fully wrap my arms around when I don't fully understand yeah. kind of how this all works. Yeah. It feels like this would have been a great HBO series. Well, yeah, that's what uh, I think Terry Gilliam was one of the directors who was approached in the 90s. And I think he walked away saying like, it'd be a great miniseries. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it's yeah. just too much to do. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot. It's just it, a it, lot. <laughs> in my opinion, not to, we don't have to go too far down this road, but the, the HBO did eventually do a miniseries, a sequel series. To the Watchmen? Yeah, but it's a it's a sequel to the comic book, so it's still oh, very yeah, yeah, similar. With, uh, Regina, Regina King. King. Yeah, it, it was very good in my opinion. It was like incredible in my opinion until the last episode or two. It just kind of didn't sew everything up the way you would have liked. Like I I remember I don't remember specifics, but I remember being like, Ugh, like what? Like how, how come that happened? But for what like, was it based? What was it based on? It's based on the 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 events of the comic book thirty five years later. And so the way the world has evolved because of what happened there. Yeah. And so like, it's, it's very, it revolves, you know, cause it's a 2020, 2019 thing, revolves a lot around like racial dynamics in this post world, but it's, it's really well done. Like, I feel like, uh, like the, the right wing folks have adopted Rorschach's views on the world. So there's all these guys that dress up like Rorschach and they're like, you know, fucking yeah. Nazi all right guys going Ugh. around like. It's really well constructed. Yeah. Until it's not, unfortunately. Does anyone return? There are, I mean, no, no actors. That's but what there I mean. are characters, characters from the original that turn up 
35 years older, which is kind of fun because you don't really know who they and are. You watch them in like several episodes and you're like, oh my God. And it's kind of fun. It's, it's, it's cool. It's cool. It's worth a watch. Very well made. Again, until they try to wrap everything up, and you're like, ah, fuck, didn't didn't stick the landing. But you, you really teed Sorry. it up really well. Yeah. You know, it, I thought it was pretty cool. D are you familiar with the differences, the comic oh. book, and the no, movie? I don't, not, no, I don't. Okay, I barely just, know the movie. Real, real, real quickly, and let me know what you think. I actually think, it, uh, personally, I think it was really smart what Zack Snyder did. Um, probably get some hate for that, uh, but both things can be good. You know, then they're just they're, they're different. Yeah. In the okay. comic book, it's the same, it's basically the same until the end where Ozymandias' plan is in the comic book to stage an alien attack on Earth. The attack has nothing to do with Dr. Manhattan. The attack is in one of his labs, he had them create this giant squid creature. And this giant squid creature descends on New York, wipes out the city, and is ultimately defeated by people having to team up because they believe it's an alien invasion. Like, oh my God, they squid. So we have to band together. To so band that's together. the result is, as a, you, yeah. The result is the same. Rorschach refuses to cooperate. Like, it's all the same. Yeah. But what the film did, obviously, was make that threat be Dr. Manhattan, which I think was, I mean, there's an argument that can be made that that's a more... That's better. That it, I'm going to say it. <laughs> because it's, because it, it retain it keeps everything in the world of these characters. Yep. And it, and certainly the way they made this film, which is so dark and very nearly humorless, you know, there's not a lot of like no. release. If you all of a sudden had this giant squid monster, you'd be like, whoa, that doesn't feel like this movie. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. so I, 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 I respect a huge bold decision to follow the letter of the text so closely and then and change so, that huge detail. Yeah. But you know, it's but a different that, medium. It's a different medium. It's a different things have to be adapted. That's the point. Yeah. The movies are different than comic books, are different than novels. They're all written differently. They're all executed differently. That's why they're called ad adaptions. Yeah. Is that the right word? Ad 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 adaptations. Adaptations. <laughs> I think we got there, but we both said it pretty rough. <laughs> <well. Adap> <laughs> ad <laughs> but that's why that, that's why they exist. As a fan. I think I would I think I would like that too because it's a fresh take on this. If the story is the story and then like a new twist, it's not like, oh, the new white man can't jump or it's just completely it's not even close to being the same. I think I, I that pisses me off as a fan of the original. Like, fuck, this isn't even this. Yeah. But in this case, it is this, this thing that I love, and a fresh little twist at the end. Like, I didn't see that coming. I didn't know that was how that's, that seems like a re, uh, reinvigorating the source material in a way where you still have the original thing that you like. Yeah, it didn't change it. So it didn't change that. So this is just a new like little, um, little baby twist on the end, which might be more fun. On top of the fact that I think that's the correct choice. Yeah. Uh, for the reasons that, that, that you said, it, it makes yeah. it more full circle. I think the comic book had a little more wit, like a little more dark humor throughout. Mm -hmm. And this film does not have that stuff as much, which no. is one of the criticisms of some people. Um, so it worked a little more. Like it was a little like for the comic book to have this kind of more fantastical finish, the big squid thing, because you're like, ah, oh, the whole thing's been a little cheeky, a little dark cheek, you know. So it, yeah, it makes sense to me, and to me, it almost is more evidence of like a filmmaker who is invested. Like if they're willing to take that chance, he's not doing it because ah, fuck it, I want to. I, I I think it's cool. It's like no, he's doing that because he thinks it's better. Yeah. And you can disagree. And that's totally fine. Of course. But like, you can't, again, it comes back to just intent. Like this person clearly cares. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I agree. If I saw a big squid at the end, I'd be like, oh. Yeah, like what? What? Why? Already on top of this dense subject matter that you're kind of confused. Yeah. yeah. Where like, wait this, a minute. Yeah. yeah that, that would be totally <coughs> very strange. It's, it's a laborious watch. <laughs> oh, I disagree. It's a lot. It is a lot, but. It's a lot to kind of get through, but it's, it's good. It's just so, like, there are times where I wish it wasn't so fucked up. Like, you know, like when it gets to like Rorschach flashback, his first case where the fucking guy yeah. kills the little girl and the yeah. dogs are eating her leg. Yeah. And he finds the panties in the stove and I'm just like, fuck. Yeah. I always forget that's coming. Yeah. And then halfway through I realize and I'm like, no, 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 but I don't, fuck, I don't want to see that leg again. Like, <laughs> there's just moments where you're just like, okay. But, you know, it's, commitment to this tone 
And so, like, yeah, those I mean, are the parts that make it laborious, if anything. That's what I'm. Yeah, it's like it's it's a it's it's a it's a lot to get through. Like you like you have to get through. It. You got to be in a mood. Yeah, that's what I mean by laborious. It, it's it's you have to like you're gonna power through some stuff. Yeah, you're gonna like you're not gonna. This is not gonna be like oh cool. What's next? <laughs> yeah, it's certainly not like a feel good movie. No, <laughs> no. But because to me, because the craft is so strong, and this is maybe this is just like being a movie head. Uh, <laughs> uh, like, that's what makes it entertaining. Like, that's what makes me feel good is I feel like I'm watching, like, someone execute on a really high level. Yeah. In a, in a, in a medium that obviously means more to me than any other medium. And where, where, where a lot of those skill sets are lacking today. I, I do want to say one other thing. The, the opening sequence is just, like, an incredible way to start a film. Like the, the whole setup of that, you, the, the world building, that's another thing I wanted to talk about. Like even just in the, f the quickest moments, like uh, the flashback scenes of uh, Dr. Manhattan before he becomes Dr. Manhattan and going to the, the fair with his, with his lady, mm -hmm. that to me makes me feel like I'm in the 1950s more than almost anything I've ever seen on film. Like I don't know what that is, what element that was, the, the, the grain, the, the set design obviously, the production design, like, it, it, it makes it even hit so much harder emotionally because it's like, oh fuck, this is real. These are real people because this world feels so real and lived in. Mm -hmm. All the way back to that first sequence where the, the, you really can imagine that guy's apartment and he, he's like just a real fucking type of guy. <laughs> and like that action scene though, right? Because if, if you go into this movie like us, you don't know the history. You don't know this guy's a superhero. He's just kind of this schlubby guy on a couch and then this guy kicks open the door and there's this really intense, cool, choreographed fight that's not super over the top and then throws him out that window like that shot of him going out the window yeah, it's yeah, one yeah. of those great shots too yeah, like, yeah. it's really just a great way to get your attention like yeah. i remember seeing the movie and being like oh so this is different like this is a different movie. yeah the speed ramps really stuck out to me the yeah. the use of not just slow motion yeah but the ramping of speed up and down and like we're gonna uh, i think it was really a good way to show nuance and like and the level of power yeah you know yeah. you get a sense of like holy shit that's happening so fast but then that just brief yeah. moment of like him going through the thing like whoa and then you understand the severity yeah. of what's happening so right. the explosion where uh, silk specter's down in that building that's on fire and she like is everybody out and then it, it, it she turns it's like speed ramp of her turning and then you know and then it slows and then it goes fast yeah, yeah. and then they have sex <laughs> What's that like? <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to I find know, out. Yeah, I can't wait. It sounds cool. I don't want to end on that. <laughs>